What is up guys? We're back with a brand new video. I'm really excited to bring this to you. This video we're going to be talking about ports and we're in particular going to be talking about do these website port calculators actually work and do they do a good job and is there any way that we can improve on them if they don't. So before we get started with that though, I want to go ahead and talk to you first about the forum. I just want to give a shout out to Evil Gnome 6. He did a really cool thing. He decided to do the Ice Power 200 build, which if you haven't seen my how to make a DIY hi-fi amplifier, this is basically what he did, but he did it in a mono block, and he even showed you guys step-by-step step how to hook this up, which should translate fairly well to the 500 and 1000 watt one as well, and he even showed you how to hook up the XLR to RCA, which a lot of people are having questions about on the Ghent audio case. So Evil Gnome 6, really appreciate it. Thanks for paying that forward. If you guys want, I'll put a link in there in the description so you guys can check that out. Now let's get back to the video of the subwoofer uh, enclosure calculators. This is a very famous site. This is a 12volt.com. This is what a lot of car audio guys use, but some home audio guys do too. Um, and let's just be honest. Uh, all, all this is going to do is tell you how to tune your subwoofer. And what we want to do is find out, does this brown port length calculator actually work? So if I'm going to put some dimensions in there, is this going to give us the same information that WinISD will? So let's go ahead and try to figure that out. What we're going to do is we're going to do just a two inch port diameter. We're going to do a two cubic foot box and we're going to do a tuning frequency of, um, let's say 30 Hertz. And we're going to go ahead and hit equal sign. Now, according to 12volt.com, it would have you believe that this is supposed to be a 3.24 inch long port. Sounds easy enough. Let's go ahead and check WinISD and see if we get that same information. Because if we do, that would be kind of cool, right? So let's go ahead and go to Dayton Audio. Actually, let's do Tang Band first since we're right here. Let's do a W5 1138SMF. That's one of my favorite little small subwoofers. That's a five and a quarter inch subwoofer. Uh, we'll do Vented. Uh, plus the two inch port should work fairly well typically you would think so with the five quarter inch driver let's go ahead and name this test one we'll go ahead and create that now what we need to do is we need to go over to our box we need to change this to two cubic feet we're going to change the tuning frequency to 30 hertz and now let's go ahead and change the vent to two inches all right look vent length of 3.22 inches so basically spot on with what we were hoping to expect it does give us an idea of the frequency response that we would hopefully receive as well so let's go ahead and try another subwoofer let's try something bigger this time let's try uh, 12 inch um, let's do let's do the Dayton audio 12 Ultimax. Uh, that's one that I feel a lot of car audio guys use and it's just a really nice sub in general anyway. And we'll call this a test two. Let's go ahead and double check this. We'll do a two inch long port. Well, let's do a two cubic foot box, tune it to 30 hertz, uh, vent two inches long, 3.22. Let's change this color because this is just confusing. Too many greens. All right, there's a blue on there. It gives us, once again, our frequency response in WinISD. All right, let's go ahead and try one more driver. So far, it's looking pretty good for this. I think if we get one more right there on the same thing, I think we can call that this does a pretty decent job of giving you the right size port length. So let's do, you know what, let's do a full range driver. Let's do the 105-4. We'll go uh, vented design. This is just a four inch full range. And we'll go test three. All right, so here's test three. Let's change that color once again because we don't want to get confused. All right, um, we'll go with the box of two cubic feet, 30 hertz, and the vent two inches long, 3.22. So all of them ended up right at 3.22. Now, if we wanted to, we could just call it here and say 12volt.com works perfectly fine, use it. But I'm gonna say, hold on, not so fast. Let's put the brakes on for just one second before we decide that. 12volt.com is doing a fantastic job, what I think, of giving you the idea of the port size that you need. It's telling you, all right, if you use this size port, this is the length of the port that you want. 
which is something I think is, is very important. And it's great to see that WinISD is backing up that data. The problem is that website isn't giving you some information that I think is important for you to have. And the first is, what's it going to sound like? Now, if we take a look at test one, if we look at these frequency responses of all three of these, they're all completely different, right? I mean, the 12 inch Ultimax has this huge hump right here at 40 Hertz. It might be something that you enjoy, may not be. That's gonna be up to each individual person. If you're going for a hi-fi subwoofer, this would definitely not be something that you would enjoy. Uh, test one, which was the Tang Band woofer, has a huge hump at 30 hertz and then a big dip right here at 49 hertz, which is two decibels down. And then the big hump is almost four decibels up. So that's a huge six decibel swing right there going on. That's not going to sound the greatest. And then test three, test three is actually going to sound like there's absolutely no bass at all. Uh, that's because your 500 hertz and above are significantly higher than here. This is actually almost, what is this, six decibels down? That's pretty low. I mean, you're going to actually feel like this speaker has no bass. It means you've, you've tried to port this speaker too low. So uh, if you hear someone say, well, I ported my speaker and now I lost all my bass, well, this is what they did. Unfortunately, something like 12volt.com is not going to show you that. The other thing it's not going to show you is whether you're going to damage your speaker. And that's something that's really important to know because if you build this box, you put this port in there, you want to make sure that you're not going to burn out your subwoofer. And I know, and I'm sure you probably know people that have done that, put their box, put their subwoofer in there, put their uh, maximum power to it and have burned it up. Next thing you know, you smell burning a few hours later. So this particular speaker can take 40 watts of power. So we put 40 watts of power in here and we go up here to um, our maximum SPL. Actually, we'll go to Cone Excursion first. If we go to Cone Excursion, look what's going on. This is a two cubic foot box. And if you take a look at this signal, I mean, I mean, it's, what is this, 120 Hertz? It's already crossing that. That means the mechanical limits of the sub, well, in this particular case, full range speaker, are actually hitting its mechanical limits at 120 hertz. That's not good. So keep that in mind that that if we start playing a lot of bass through this speaker, we'd actually burn it out. That's something that 12 volt can't do. Now this WinISD, I'm not trying to sell you on a program. WinISD is free program, guys. So this is not something of me telling you don't use 12volt.com because I think 12volt.com, we've already proven, can be very beneficial. It just doesn't quite give you all the data you want. Now, if we went to maximum power, we're going to see that same issue that we just talked about. Um, you look at 112, it's still getting you 30 watts of power or so, and then it's quickly dropping off there. Now, let's go back to the Ultimax, and you're going to see that this actually does a really good job with maximum power. Maximum power of that subwoofer is 600 watts. So if we click on 600 watts, we are going to see that it did a really great job all the way to what is this oh 23 hertz now you're most likely going to have what we call either a subsonic infrasonic or high pass at this point in time here so you don't have to really worry about it going below 20 hertz if you're just playing music you might not even have to worry about that either but just to show you what i mean by that if we go to high pass we go to 20 hertz, actually it's typically closer to 17 hertz. We'll just go ahead and add one on there. And we go to cone excursion and you're pretty well set up. You might need to increase that a little bit or even change that to like a 20 hertz or 22 or whatever. But you got your pretty much your cone excursion under control now. So it's just barely going over right here. You might increase that to like a 22 hertz just to knock it completely out and there you go your cone excursion is gone and you still got a really good frequency response something like win isd can actually show you that it can show you hey in order to protect your subwoofer let's put this type of high pass subsonic infrasonic uh, filter on it to be able to protect your subwoofer that way you don't just blow your brand new ultimax 12 because no one wants to do that and honestly you're not losing anything on the response with this particular subwoofer the way that we did it 
But there's one other issue that we have not gone over, and that's sound quality. So we've already gone over response, but there's one other thing that also goes into the quality of the sound, and that's what we call rear port air velocity. This is also known as chuffing, okay? Now, typically, you want to be around 17 meters a second. Now, this particular 12-inch subwoofer is at 141 meters a second. Okay, 17 is where we want it. It's at 141. This is going to chuff and chuff bad. If you've never heard a speaker chuff, it basically sounds exactly like what the word sounds like. It just sounds like a whole bunch of air trying to escape a tiny hole all at once. And it sounds terrible. This would sound absolutely awful. And I don't know anyone that would want to listen to this for a long period of time. It's just going to be a whole lot of that chuffing noise. In order to get that under control, you're going to have to severely increase that vent size. I don't even know. There you go. Six inch vent would be fairly decent. And look, you're actually right around 16 meters a second with a six inch vent. That's the other thing that something like 12 volts is not going to be able to tell you. It's not going to be able to tell you, hey, how much is your subwoofer going to chuff? Is it going to sound bad or not once we put this subwoofer port combination together? So I say this all not to tell you not to use a website like 12 volt. I think that it definitely has its place and I think that it can be used really, really well. My point is to tell you that uh, I think that this is a good tool to use to get an idea of what you can and cannot do, uh, what size port you would need. But I, I feel like if you really want to get the best sound quality and you really want to make sure that your subwoofer is being protected, then you're going to want to input that information also into WinISD. It will get you much better results in the long run. But, all right, guys, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you don't have to. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I do try to get to those when I can. And as always, uh, have a great day. This is 123 Toy, and I'm out.